Welcome to Open House, where we celebrate organizations and people who do good things for the community. Today we have Commander Mitch Mummert and past Commander Lewis Jones from Gettysburg Post 202 of the American Legion. Now before we jump into our conversation, I have to admit, I didn't know anything other than it was a Veterans Administration. So I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised and hopefully learn some things today about what our American Legions are doing for our veterans and how important and what they do. So gentlemen, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. You want to introduce yourself? Uh, I think, uh, Lewis, you had also, you're doing some other things in the district and state level. Yes, um, I'm currently the district commander. We break up the department, which is what we call all of our states, into districts. Um, and I am currently the 22nd district commander, which co covers Adams, York, Fulton, and Franklin County. So I work with all the posts within that area to make sure they're get, doing what they're supposed to do, meeting the regulations, the criteria of what it means to be an American Legion. And then I've also started recently working at the department level as the state activities director. So I oversee all this, this big, big activities we run throughout the state. So everything from Legion baseball to something as simple as our state bowling tournament or golf tournament, but to include our educational programs. Okay, excellent. And Mitch, you're commander of the local post 203. Right. How long have you been commander for there? Uh, this is my second term. Well, yeah, I'm finishing up my second term. I am also involved at the district level as well. Okay. I'm the district adjutant. All right. So. Awesome. Great. So for those that don't know, <laughs> included the American Legion. Now, I did a little research, so I'll jump in and get it started. 1919 is when Congress actually chartered the American Correct. Legion. Fill me in the history and why that was started in addition. Well, basically the main reason that it came about is soldiers were looking at what happened when we came back from war. Um, if you think back to the Civil War, um, the Spanish-American War, um, when soldiers came home, there was really nothing there for them. You know, there was no medical help, there was nothing to deal with the issues related to what they suffered in war. Um, so they saw a need to create an organization that was going to lobby and find ways to get the government to start taking care of veterans. So in Paris, they had the first meeting, and it brought together soldiers from all backgrounds, all ethnic groups, every, every race and religion. Um, it didn't matter what the rank was. And they came together in a meeting and started to formalize the idea for what became the American Legion. Um, and actually, the funny part, there was a group called the, the American Legion prior to us, um, and they became some of the main people who would eventually be instrumental to doing this because that back then they were a readiness group. They did military training okay. um, to prepare people in case we needed people to fight war so they, because we didn't really have a standing army in much the way people would have expected. That leads to a broader question. I thought the American Legion, America. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> what it is. And then you just mentioned that. And when I was doing my research, I saw worldwide. Yes. Plus, you just mentioned Paris. Why Paris? Versus getting something started here in... Well, at the end, of, as the war was winding down in World War I, there were all these people sitting in, sitting in France, um, in Germany, okay. and they put out a call and asked them all to meet in Paris. And so that is where they had the first formation meeting. Um, and of course, then the final meeting was held here in the States in St. Louis. And that's where officially the Legion began. Okay. So I saw two, over 2 million... Yes. And 13,000 posts throughout the world. That is correct. 52 different departments. Wow. So can you broaden the scope of the uh, departments? I mean, what? what well, would you... departments include, for example, uh, we have a de department of, in France, Germany, um, Britain. Um, they are all part of one, our, our European department. Um, we have, of course, Asia. Um, we have a members everywhere in, pretty much in the world. So you can go, we have members of posts in China, we have posts in, in Hong Kong, um, we have posts in Canada. Um, basically anywhere people who have served in US military have been, okay. um, a post has been created. Um, you'll find there are a lot of posts r related to military installations around the world. Um, so for example, I was stationed in Frankfurt, Ger in Germany, and there was a post right nearby um, where, where I was stationed, right, right there in Wiesbaden. Yeah, makes sense. For me, you just think veterans are home. 
that they're here in the States, but there's so many that are all over. We, we have veterans who live pretty, on every continent, for the most part, who have fought and died for the United States. Um, and the thing about it is we want to make sure they have access to resources that they need so that they can ha take their lives and continue with them, take care of themselves, their families, their communities. And so th that's, that's, the, that's the whole reason we are here. Okay, that's awesome. How is it funded then? So where is the, that large of an organization worldwide, 13,000 posts, it sounds like there's, and I'm, a, I'm guess, I'm going to imagine most are, at least the lower, before the national level are, are volunteer. Every, right? Everybody is a everybody. volunteer. Everybody's a volunteer. Um, we have dues for membership, just like any other fraternal organization. Um, we do fundraising extensively throughout the year, and that's how we raise the money that we use to do what we do. We rely, it's basically the, what we pay as dues as members, what we can raise through fundraising, that's how we do what we do. Um, there, there is no major sponsors, th th really. It's, it's just us doing what we do. Okay, that's awesome. You mentioned about uh, uh, programs for the community, mutual helpfulness. Can you describe some of the things that, if you're a veteran, I would imagine most of those would know about you, but what things do you do for the veterans? What are some of the programs, and then for the community? Um, for the veterans, we our actual local post has a um, what we call a uh, veterans relief fund, and if there's a veteran in our area that's in need of help financially, you know if they can't pay, you know if they can't get groceries or if they need a utility bill or something like that, it's a one-time type stop for them to come to us, and we'll help them out that one time, and then we'll guide them into either looking at the VA for help or other other resources. You know. Okay. Yeah. One of the big things we have in America, we have what we call service officers. Um, and we have service officers at the local level at most of our posts. Well, they'll be at the county level as well, but we also have them at the state level. And their job is to work with vet veterans to make sure they can get all the help they need. So if they need help getting into the VA system um, for medical care, um, for, if they need help with contacts for educational purposes. Um, these are the people that we're going to help them. And it starts out at the post level because the post can identify them and then recommend them to the right resources so that they're able to get the help they need. Okay. And I work, imagine you work closely with Stan Clark, the veteran. Very close. Affairs. He was just he's, here yesterday or the day before. Stan's you know, actually a good friend. He's a member of our post. He's a member of our post. Yep. Okay. Awesome. If you're a veteran out there today and uh, what would be some of the things you say, all right, here specifically, come in and talk to us and we'll get you started. Well, I would say one, if, if you're trying to reconnect with somebody who might have under, understand what you've gone through, this, this is the opportunity to come in, sit down with somebody and, and talk about what you've went through, share experiences, you know, build relationships, because that's what it's about. We, when we were serving, we had comrades, we had camaraderie, we had people we could share what we were going through. Um, for a lot of veterans, especially today, they find themselves disconnected once they get out. The American Legion and all veteran service organizations, truly, um, the big thing we try to do is make, give them that camaraderie, give them that context so they can go in. They know that there's someone who can come and listen to them, who will have understanding, who will not judge them. Uh, and this is very important, especially with the high rate of, of veteran suicide. It's, it's at 22 veterans per day. Um, and, matter of fact, the American Legion was one of the major pushers for the now national suicide hotline. Um, so it, it's one of these things where we see it as a serious problem, just as we see homelessness among veterans, well, among the general population, but even especially veterans. It's at, really high. It's really high. So we, we want to do everything we can to try to alleviate those issues, because if we can alleviate them for veterans, that has an effect for our local communities. It actually helps defeat the problem even at the local level. That's awesome. We had a, uh, done a number of programs called Remember Those Who Served. Yes. And one of them was Jim Crutt. Um, he used to be a board member, and he was also a marketing manager at Adams Electric. And I don't think he talked. He was from Vietnam. I don't think uh, he talked at all about his experiences until he was on uh, the program. And he was interviewed. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. It wasn't... Uh, and then we edited it and uh, aired it. 
that he couldn't talk about his experiences. What is it? Those that, and I, unfortunately, I didn't serve. I, was, I grew up uh, and did not serve, but uh, part of me wishes I, I would. <laughs> um, what is it that just affects people that they can't talk about that, from your experiences, from, as a veteran and servant? I would say probably the biggest thing is the fact that there's traumas you go through when you serve. There are things you see that it's hard to talk about with people. Um, I, I had an uncle who was a World War II veteran. Um, he fought up through Okinawa, and I didn't learn about it until he was, until probably three, four years before he passed. And it was because they did a program talking about veterans, the survivors of his unit that fought all the way up Okinawa. And that's when we found out. So that's when he finally talked about it because he felt finally he could. Mm. And a lot of it gets back to what you experience, what traumas you see. Um, I will say there's probably no veteran who hasn't served who has not experienced some sort of trauma while serving, um, whether it be Vietnam, Vietnam era, what we call the Cold War era, or after. Um, everybody has experienced something that's affected them. And the hard thing is finding the ability to sit down and talk with people without feeling you're going to be judged. Because mm -hmm. there's always been that sentiment by some people that you know, people who serve are only there for one reason. And it, the fact is most people, most volunteers go in because they feel that this is something they want to do for their country. But it hasn't always been that they've been appreciated by this country. Yeah. And so yeah. that alone makes it hard for them to talk. Makes sense. Yeah, it's a lot of even you see that more with the even now with the guys that are coming back from OEF, o, o, I, you know, that came back from that. And a lot of them are dealing with the maltraumatic brain injuries and the uh, post traumatic stress disorder. And a lot of that is because of what they experienced when they were over in, in country and the horrible sights and, and all that stuff. What is it um, that we can do as somebody that didn't serve, if, you know, families, friends, what is the best thing that we can help for our vets, of those that have served and, and maybe haven't talked? I mean, you don't want to press too hard, I would imagine. I would say the one thing you can do is when they want to talk, listen. Don't push for and question because the fact of the matter is we, we, if we've never served, we can't understand what they've gone through. Um, but we can, but can do is be there to be a support. You know, um, we need to show appreciation. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of people now that when they see a vet, they'll say thank you for the service. But I ask them to think about what you're thanking them for. Don't just say thank you for the service. Express why you're thankful. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes that's going to have more meaning than just saying thank you. Um, sometimes that thank you is just by road. It's sort of empty. Right. But be willing to say why you're thankful. That's good. Hmm. Did you get that, America? Because <laughs> <laughs> normally, I, that, you know, thank you for your service. It's something I don't know, and it's you know trying to recognize that. But that is why you know what the freedoms that we enjoy. And, and I mean, it, we talk about the why all the time in the American Legion. Why you joined? Why you served? And the thing is, I think all Americans need to be thinking about that why. You know. Why am I thankful? What is it they've done that's made me thankful? You know, and it could be a small thing such as just walking down the street and giving a smile to a child or recognizing a child. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the vet, the child, that child has, has more in, been impacted more right. by the contact with that veteran. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we just need to think about the why. Okay. What uh, theater, is that what we call it? What, what were you in for your service? Well, I, I started, I was in the Air Force. Um, my, I was served during what's called the Cold War era. Um, so I, my initial station was over in Germany at Rhein-Main Air Base. Um, and Rhein-Main is right next to the Frankfurt Airport. It's the two largest airfields in all of Europe. Um, and of course, during the Cold War, our biggest worry was the Russians and the Czechoslovakians coming through the Folder Gap. So we, we were there. Uh, and in my job, I did spend a lot of time working on the flight line. To, and I worked in heating systems. Um, and funny enough, I spent a lot of time working on air handler systems, which were used to keep listening posts from listening in. Um, then from there, I was stationed at Offutt Air Force Base, which was SAC headquarters at that time. 
and I was posted out at the E4 hangar, which is the airborne command post. So I helped run that run that hangar. Okay, awesome. And I uh, enlisted during the Gulf War era, and into the Army Reserves. And my unit was based out of New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. Um, just right after 9/11, I had an involuntary transfer to a unit in Vallejo, California, and they were at their mode station in Texas, so I met up with them, and was in Texas for a little over a year until they got the whole unit up and running, and they took this unit where they just basically changed the whole MTEL, the organization of it, and they filled the unit with every state and two US, US territories. Wow. And it took us about a year to get ready, and then we went over for um, OEF, OIF. And I was in Kuwait basically the whole time I was over there. Okay. So. We can uh, edit this out if, if it's something that's uncomfortable. I wanted to ask you, that was the thing that I had thought of and then forgot. Um, and that is, as you talked about serving and why, the Vietnam era, mm -hmm. and that was Jim Crutz uh, coming back from that, that they were uh, really the worst as far as treated. Yes. And, and, and sometimes it almost feels like we're, we're sliding to that same fortune. I think there's still a strong national thankfulness to our troops, but there's, there's a segment that really is making inroads. How do how do you combat that and, and as the American Legion and also personally that and, and what can we do to say, look, this is important and why and to fight that, if you will? You know, I, I think we have to recognize there's a difference between what the government does and what the military does. You know, the, the government is the one who sends us, but it's the military, it's the members who go and fight these wars. Um, and, and the fact of the matter is when they come back, they're citizens just like everybody else. Um, and now, with Vietnam, Korea, there was a draft. So people did not have a choice. Sure. They, they were told, you, you, you number got called, you were, you were told you were going to go. Um, today, our forces all volunteer. So these are young men and women who are stepping up to take an oath to serve, to protect. And the fact of the matter is, there, yes, there's going to be some bad eggs in every bunch. We, right. we can't get around that. But we can't look at everyone who puts on the uniform and paint them with a, with a, with a single paintbrush. Right. We have to realize that these are our neighbors, our sons, our daughters, our cousins, our fathers, mothers, who are taking the time to give up a portion of their life, in some cases 20, 30 years of their life, to wear that uniform to do what they think is right. And they've earned respect. And we need to show that respect. And the fact is, you don't have to agree with war. Um, matter of fact, I, would tell, I don't know anybody who's ever put on the uniform who likes the idea of going to war, who right. glorifies in war. Um, for the most part, the last thing we want to do is have to go fight. But we're willing to, if that is the necessary thing we're called to do, we're willing to make, take that, make that sacrifice. But the fact is, we would rather be in peace. And that's what people need to realize. No one who served or who will serve actually wants to serve because they want to go kill someone. They want to start a right. war. What they want to do is protect their homeland, protect their families, their communities. And if called upon, they're willing to make, make the sacrifice that many just aren't able to do, able to or want to do. Mm. That bears repeating. <laughs> it's, say that again, because I think that's where, that's the confusion that people get. They, you know, they're, they're thinking, oh, you, you're ready to, you know, just take out there and you just want to shoot people and whatever, and to realize, no, it's not. No, I mean, to be honest, I can tell, I know plenty of people I've served with who would say they are pacifists, mm. okay? But the difference being that if they, it came to protecting their fellow soldier, their fellow airman, the fellow Marine, fellow seaman, if it came to pr protecting their homeland, they're willing to chain, take the step to do so. But in the end, they'd rather not have to. And that's something people need to understand. And it takes, it takes a unique commitment to be able to say, I'm doing this only because I feel if it's necessary, I want to be there to do it. But 
if my choice is between killing somebody or resolving it through diplomacy, I'd rather see it done through diplomacy. I love it. That's great. That is really awesome. Mitch, any thoughts on that? Anything to add? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was he, well. He versed that pretty well. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really well. I, that, we, should, we should grab that quote and put, uh, put that on our, uh, this will be on Facebook, but just a short where people, because people tend on Facebook not to watch longer programs, but the short thought to help people understand that. Let's go today now. What are some of the things that you're currently involved in working on uh, programs or, or so forth in either raising funds or, or helping people? What are you doing right today? Well, um, school year is about ending, and we're going through um, school awards right now. Um, just this, was it this past week? Oops, yes. We presented two awards to ROTC students with the Gettysburg High School. And we have the middle school, which is this week, where we're presenting an award for a student at the middle school, a boy. And the auxiliary is doing one for a girl. And then there's also a program that we have called Dollars for Scholars. And there's actually an award being presented to a student on Wednesday as well, which, you know, I'm gonna have dollars for scholars present that because I'm tied up with other things. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we, we do a lot, of, we've, we've instituted scholarships to help students go through. Um, we, we fundraise it and help support programs at the high school. For example, um, last year, a uh, group of the students from the ROTC here in Gettysburg, they got the honor of going over to Normandy. And they, we help support that both through the post and our our Sons of the American Legion, um, helping them get raise money. Um, and they've represented Gettysburg, and served in the international ceremony, um, and I had the honor of going over with them. And it was amazing to see because you learn it's it's something I tell everybody. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Everybody should go over to see the D-Day celebration, mm. um, to understand how people think about our military. Because when you're there. Um, it's amazing because you see more American flags flying around France than what you would, people would have ever expected. But everywhere I went in France, there were American flags flying next to the French flag. Wow. Um, and they, they have not forgotten what World War II meant, what the US involvement in World War II meant, what our sons and daughters who fought over there meant. Yeah. And so they do, they do firmly understand it. Um, our students learn to understand it because they get to get involved with things and we can support them when they're doing those things. Um, we have a Legion baseball team and Legion baseball is one of our major programs actually. Um, we're going to be celebrating the 100th anniversary of Legion baseball in a few years. And it was 1925. First, 1925. So and the first it was first started up in of all places South Dakota. And so <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not the hotbed of baseball, is no, it? No, it's that? not. But um, and it's actually, it's one of the major programs I am working with at the state level right now. And I've got about 194 teams um, throughout the state. I'd love to have more. I'd love to get us up to 400 someday. Wow. Um, we used to be at that level, but um, we're competing with all the different sports out there today. A lot more than it used to be. A lot more than it used to be. Right. But um, it's one of our major Ameri what we call Americanism programs. Um, the students are taught about teamwork, loyalty, and the fact that this is what it takes to make a, make a good citizen. You have, you have to work with other people. You have to be loyal to everyone. And that's one of the major emphasis we have in our Americanism programs, because we also have our mm -hmm. Keystone Boys State, which will t brings young men who are rising seniors from all around the state to come together. And it's at Shippensburg University. Mm -hmm. They'll be there for a week. They'll learn how the government works, starting from the lowest level at the city level all the way up to the state, state house. And it, it just teaches them about what civic, civic engagement is. And so, so we emphasize a lot of our programs emphasize those, those ideals. That's excellent. That's fantastic. Any others that uh, programs that are going on right now? We also s send students to uh, Pennsylvania State Police Youth Week. And that's for any student that's looking into getting into the military or into the police you know, force. And it's basically like a little boot small mini boot camp to prepare them to go on to that next level. Um, we do awards for law enforcement officer of the year, uh, firefighter of the year, 
uh, paramedic of the year. School teacher of the year? S school teacher, well, yeah, school teacher of the year, which I actually submitted for one of our teachers in Gettysburg. And um, I mean, we, we try to recognize people all across the community. So we'll have uh, for, for, employ, employ, for veteran employment, small business, large business. Um, we, we recognize scouts throughout the year because we, we work very closely with the scouting program in the, in the United States. Um, we do just about everything we can to get involved with and we're always looking for other opportunities. Um, the fact of the matter is the American Legion looks to be involved in the community and that, that is the basis of what we are. We are a community-based organization. Um, we're made up of people from the community who want to give back to the community and, and they're doing just, just the way they're doing it. So we, we invite people in, we might have, we have events at our posts um, to invite the community in, whether it be everything from a bingo to just a dinner. Um, and we do all these things simply, and all, any money we raise goes towards supporting veterans programs and programs in our communities. Well, we also do blood drives too. Yes. You know. I think we featured, we put one on the What's Happening, and we have it on our, our bulletin board, the one coming up on the 25th. That's correct. Of, mm -hmm. of May. There's quite well, others that will incorporate when they get closer to that. I looked at the uh, programs and I did the, this, this, the uh, drop down box and I thought, oh, <laughs> there was like, I don't know, 30, I didn't count them. There was a lot. And I thought, okay, I can't list each one. And, and, and it's just amazing how much you guys really do. I mean, I think people have got the misperception yeah. and have had the misperception for a long time that the American Legion, the VFW, veteran service organizations are basically nothing but bars. Right. But, but the fact of the matter is that's not the truth. I mean, yes, we have a canteen, as we call it. Um, that is for people to get together for camaraderie, social, social relief. Um, but it's not the focus of what we do. What we do is we, uh, we have four pillars in the American Legion, uh, veteran, children, and youth, uh, community, um, and I'm forgetting law and order. Law and order. And we try, strive to meet all those four pillars, and they all tie together because they tie together with veterans and their families, mm, veterans yes. and their community. And our whole goal is to serve those four pillars. So all the programs we have created, all the programs we will create, even going to the future, and not every post use, does all of them. Um, they pick what ones fit for their community and for, for their base. Um, and some come up with even new programs that they do at their own local levels. But the whole purpose is that we're there to serve our community, be there to be a resource. And so we, we want people to realize that's why we're here. And all with the, the foundation, if you will, of, of good government, good civic, uh, uh, citizenship, patriotism, honor, all those things that build a solid foundation. Exactly. Uh, without your, your sort of crumbling. Before we had started, you were, we were chatting and you said you found some numbers on Adams County and who served in past, those that have passed as veterans. Do you, can you share that with us? Yeah, um, actually, and I've broken it down, the numbers down by war. So for World War I, we had 53 members of Adams County who were, who were killed in action. Um, World War II saw 88. Uh, Korea, we had, saw 12. Vietnam, 16. And the war on terror, we've been lucky. We've only lost one soldier. Um, and, and most of this information, it, it, it might take a little bit of time. It took me a couple hours. But by searching through the Adams County genealogical databases um, that are held by the Historical Society, um, I found some of this. I also went on to Ancestry.com. They have a link called, to a site called Fold.com, mm. um, which has extensive military records um, that go back to the Civil War era. And so if anybody's looking for information on a family that may have served, that, that's one good way to find out um, where they served, get copies of their military records. Um, you can also go to the National Archives um, if, you are, if you are a family member, and you can actually ask for military records of anybody, anybody in your family who served, as well as their decorations and medals. Wow. So it's out there. It's out it's, there. It, it takes it, some digging. It takes some digging. Um, and sometimes it just takes talking to the right person and asking the right question. All right, let's pivot then to the Memorial Day Parade coming up, Gettysburg Memorial Day Parade. How are you involved and, and what are you doing for that? Well, I, when I was commander and Mitch as commander, I have sat as a member of the committee, the commission, that oversees and puts on the parade. 
Um, and we work together to do fundraising, asking for support from the community and from other entities throughout the mm -hmm. community to make sure, ensure we can put on the parade every year. Um, and it's, it takes a lot of work. We spend pretty much a year working on every facet of the parade, looking to get participants, to find out who's going to be the grand marshals, um, to look for the speaker who's going to speak at the, because the parade is just the focus to get us to the actual celebration at the National Cemetery, Cemetery right. which is what really it is about. Um, this is the, what, the second oldest parade in the United States. Guess Memorial Day. Memorial Day parade. Guess Memorial Memorial Day. Day. Second oldest I'm, parade. I have to ask, who's first? You know, you know? <laughs> that's, that's a question that's I've, okay. never, I've, I've never actually found out, but now that you ask, I'm going to have to find <laughs> out. Um, uh, but we've, we've been going on longer. I mean, the initial parades, parades started out as veterans who were coming to walk down the streets, and they walked from basically downtown to the National Cemetery to hold a ceremony in the memory of those who gave, made the ultimate sacrifice at the, during the Civil War. And, huh. and it actually started out. It's decoration Day. It was, it was decoration, decoration Day. day. And, and it actually started out with a lot of the local African American communities holding these parades, to, especially after the end of the war um, and the end of slavery. Right. And it's morphed into something much bigger. Um, and now it's to mem memorialize not just those who made the sacrifice during the Civil War, but those who made the Very ultimate much. sacrifice over the, over the decades and years. Right. That's awesome. I didn't realize that. Number two. That's great. Anything else you want to add as far as the American Legion for programs or uh, what your visions are? Any, any um, of that? We forgot to mention the essay and oratorical contest. Yes. So. Um, um, one of the things, it's like we, we do have an essay and oratorical contest. Um, the essay contest is done at the elementary, or excuse yeah, me, middle, middle school, school and, and high, school. high school level. Um, and of course, there's scholarships that come with those. Um, we have an oratorical competition that actually starts at the post level, will go all the way up to the state and then to the national level. Oh. Um, and basically, they're, typically the oratorical competition is looking at a theme based upon the Constitution and specific amendments to the Constitution. The students will do a speech. Um, so if anybody out there does any type of speech and debate program, this is a great program for to get in. And of course, um, starting at the post level, there are scholarships to be given, awards given all the way up. Um, we have other programs going on, such as shooting programs um, that we do nationally. Actually, a young man from Pennsylvania is going to be going on to Colorado That's to shoot. That's a rifle, rifle shooting? Yes, air rifle. Air rifle. rifle. And he will be shooting, represent, representing Pennsylvania at the national competition. Oh. Um, so we, we have students and we, that get involved at all levels. We have programs that are geared towards getting students involved. Um, and of course, we have programs within the American Legion, such as the Sons of the American Legion, which both of us belong to. Um, and it's, it's basically to work with the youth, who are the, ch the sons of veterans, to teach them about the same ideals, loyalty, patriotism, responsibility. Um, we have programs through our the auxiliary, American Legion Auxiliary that does the same thing for the young ladies. Um, and so the big things, we are a family organization in every way and facet, and there's something for everyone. That's awesome. I should say we have uh, the master of, I'm sorry, the grand marshal yes. of the parade is Christy Lucas, yep. Roots for Boots, and she's also a board member of Community Media, so we're excited to... And we've worked closely with Roots for Boots over the years. Yep. So. She's doing great. They're really doing great things. That is so great. Well, I want to wrap it up. I really thank you for coming on. Uh, it has helped me appreciate what the American Legion is doing. And I'm going to say thank you for your service, but also why. And that is recognizing what you and the armed forces have done for keeping peace. The bad actors of the world know that if somebody's there to, to step up, they won't most of the time, hopefully. And giving us the freedoms that we have, I believe, ordained by God, first of all, the freedoms uh, that we have in America that I'm disturbed at times to see, especially some of our younger people, not realize what they do have in America. And uh, just to recognize that, that you have served in that way and, and stood up. And thank you for that service. Thank you. And thanks for being here.
My pleasure. It's a pleasure. There you go. American Legion, I encourage you to look online on the Post 202 Gettysburg for their vision, what they're doing, but also the National American Legion. There is so much that they're doing for our veterans, for our communities, that I'm amazed and so appreciative and honored that we could have uh, these two commanders of the Post 202 Legion, American Legion here. So thank you for watching, and you have a good day.